Hello everyone, Pratima here. So it's been about a month since I started using both the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the smaller and more affordable S23 Plus. I will have my S23 Plus review up very soon, but let's talk about the S23 Ultra today. If you remember, I was a big fan of last year's S22 Ultra. I think it was the best Android phone out there, but if I'm being honest, it still did not compare to my daily driver, the iPhone 14 Pro. There were a lot of areas where the iPhone just outperformed the S22 Ultra. And it seems like I wasn't the only one who felt that way because the S22 series did not sell as well as Samsung had hoped. They missed their sales goal of 30 million units, which is pretty significant. In contrast, the iPhone 14 Pro hit that same goal just three months after its launch. But this year, with the S23 Ultra, I like what Samsung has done. They have kept the design almost identical to last year's S22 Ultra, which in my opinion gives Samsung its own unique identity. In the past, they used to switch up the design every other year, but this new approach allows them to concentrate on what really matters, which is improving the hardware and providing an even better software experience. And you know what? They absolutely nailed it with the S23 Ultra. Okay, the first thing I have found they improved greatly here is the battery life. When it comes to flagships, iPhones always have the best backup, but with the S23 Ultra, I am getting even better results. On heavy usage with mobile data turned on all the time, I am constantly getting seven to eight hours of screen on time, which reflects to like a full day of use with around 10 to 15% charge left before I go to sleep. The overnight or idle battery drain is also very minimal here, so that's fantastic. Plus, a 45 watt charger can fill up the S23 Ultra faster than the iPhone or Pixel, reaching 70% in just 30 minutes and a full charge in an hour. So I am really satisfied with the battery life I'm getting from this phone and there are several reasons for that. Yes, the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip and better software optimization certainly help. But the main reason is that Samsung is using a more energy efficient display panel this time around, which consumes less power at higher brightness levels. Likewise, the core quality of the display is another aspect I always love about Samsung's flagships and the S23 Ultra continues to impress me. If you go by specs, it's similar to what the S22 Ultra had. It's still an 8-bit panel with 1715 nits of peak brightness and a 240 Hz dot sampling rate, which does not sound very impressive considering what Chinese brands are offering these days. But let me assure you, this is the best display you can find on a smartphone right now, even better than the iPhone 14 Pro. Maybe the iPhone 14 Pro gets slightly brighter when using the phone in direct sunlight, but when it comes to watching videos on Netflix or uh, vertical videos on TikTok, I find the experience on the S23 Ultra to be better. Similarly, I have been using it in the default vivid picture mode, which is not the most color accurate, but it does provide a lively and engaging visual experience, which you will surely fall in love with. Talking about that, Samsung phones sadly continue to miss out on Dolby Vision playback in favor of the open source Asia 10 Plus standard. So whenever I'm watching Dolby Vision videos on OTD platforms, I find that level of highlights and contrast levels missing here over phones that support Dolby Vision. However, you do get Dolby Atmos audio support on the S23 Ultra and the way Samsung has tuned its audio here is quite different from what you get on the iPhone. For example, the S23 Ultra has a spacious sound output and noticeably richer bass, whereas the iPhone 14 Pro lets you enjoy the mids and high frequencies much better. Just listen to this. If I could, I would keep something new. Another thing I've got to mention is I'm having a very good time interacting with this phone, all thanks to its great haptics, fantastic touch responsiveness, and the curves that almost look like they're flat. But I think Samsung could have done a better job with these buttons. They don't feel that premium and the feedback is not the most satisfying either. 
Other than that, its build quality is rock solid with the latest Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on both the back and the front of the phone alongside the armored aluminum frames. And although this is a pretty huge phone, the weight distribution here is right on point. This might seem like nothing, but um, with smartphone makers opting for bigger and bigger camera sensors, it's quite difficult to achieve this level of ergonomics. I just started testing this phone, the Xiaomi 13 Pro, which has a big one inch camera sensor. And because of that, the weight is not distributed properly here. It just uh, feels a little too heavy and unergonomic. Same thing with the OnePlus 11, which is a bit bottom heavy. Okay, let's get to performance now, which has traditionally been an area where iPhones dominantly excel over Android phones. On top of that, Samsung's flagships have always faced criticism due to the use of different processors in different regions. And um, on last year's S22 series, both the Exynos 2200 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 were big disappointments. But things finally look promising for Samsung this year. That's because the company has teamed up with Qualcomm to launch a slightly higher binned version of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is exclusive to the S23 lineup. If you're not aware, the new 8 Gen 2 is made by TSMC, the same semiconductor manufacturing company that makes Apple's chipset. So the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, as Samsung likes to call it, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Apple's A16 Bionic and even outperforms it in the graphics department. Needless to say, I am very satisfied with the performance of the S23 Ultra overall. On top of that, you also get a large vapor cooling system this time, which offers much, much better thermals. Last year's S22 Ultra had heating issues when charging the phone or when playing games for around 30 minutes or so, but that's no longer a problem with the S23 Ultra. Here, as you can see from this chart, you get a slightly cooler temperature on the S23 Ultra compared to other Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phones. The surface temperature never reaches beyond 40 degrees even while playing fairly unoptimized and heavy games like Genshin Impact. Samsung has also brought an interesting feature called bypass charging, which gamers will definitely like. When enabled, it lets the phone power up directly from the charger without charging the battery. Doing this generates less heat, thereby leading to improved thermals, better sustained performance, and eventually better battery health as well. Okay, so what about the cameras? Here too, Samsung has done its homework and made improvements over the already excellent S22 Ultra. I compared the S22 Ultra and S23 Ultra's images and found that both of them bring similar color science and dynamic range. But with the higher res 200 megapixel sensor, the S23 Ultra manages slightly better details, lesser noise and better sharpness, both during daytime as well as in low light conditions. The S23 Ultra also maintains better highlights in images with a lot of whites, like this flower over here. It also does slightly better with selfies, ultra-wide angle, 3x and 10x shots. But don't get me wrong, last year's S22 Ultra is still a pretty capable camera phone in its own right and you will not notice that many differences unless you are nitpicking. In fact, in most portraits I clicked, I actually like the way S22 Ultra maintains the subject's skin tone. But I'm pretty sure that's something Samsung will improve with future updates on the S23 Ultra. The reason why I am so confident about Samsung improving its cameras is, if you remember, the S22 Ultra went through the same phase and after 4 to 5 updates, its cameras drastically improved, especially in terms of portraits. So far, I've only received one update on the S23 Ultra and that has already improved the low light portrait shots. Now, you might also be wondering how the S23 Ultra stacks up with the iPhone 14 Pro, right? And I am happy to report to you that this time, Samsung is neck and neck in almost all scenarios. It's like 50% uh, of the time, you might like iPhone's images more because of punchier contrast and that classic warm temperature. But the rest of the time, you will like the overall pleasant and brighter shots from the S23 Ultra. The S23 Ultra also seems more competent in low light and indoor portraits. Just uh, look at this image, for example, where Samsung is clearly doing a better job. Likewise, this photo of the Stupa looks much better from the S23 Ultra too. 
However, sometimes, especially with the night mode on, Samsung has uh, like too much over processing going on, which I hope gets fixed pretty soon. Overall, the S23 Ultra S cameras are just outstanding. Let's not forget that 10x periscope lens, which allows you to zoom up to 100x, take photo of the moon and whatnot, which is simply not possible on an iPhone or any other Android phone right now. However, the videography aspect is still one thing where Samsung is marginally behind the iPhone 14 Pro. Samsung says it has doubled the OIS offset area on the S23 Ultra, but for me, the iPhone still does stabilization, noise reduction, and exposure management better than Samsung. Plus, the S23 Ultra selfie video is a bit too narrow, and I always have to stretch a bit to get a good field of view while shooting a video. So video is one area I really hope Samsung engineers figure out a way to be more competitive and more reliable next year. Oh, and one more thing which is still not on iPhone's level is the shutter lag. Samsung's camera assistant app definitely improves things by quite a bit, but I'd say there's still room for improvement. That being said, I have to applaud Samsung for bringing a true 8K 30fps recording this time. Both the field of view and stabilization is much better here compared to the S22 Ultra. Okay, I guess it's time to conclude this video now. As an iPhone user for the past two to three years, there are basically four reasons why my primary phone has always been an iPhone. Number one, excellent battery life. Number two, great cameras, both for photos and videos. Number three, reliable experience. And number four, years of updates. But if you look at this phone, the S23 Ultra, it matches the iPhone 14 Pro Max in every aspect. Maybe not in terms of videos, but it outperforms in other things like photos, zoom shots, and on top of all of this, you also get some extras like this S Pen, and damn, it works really well. Plus, Samsung's One UI is also something that has grown over the years to become the best Android skin out there. Samsung has even set a standard with four years of OS and five years of security updates on its flagships and aims to bring software updates even faster in the future too. So this time, I genuinely feel that the S23 Ultra is a great alternative to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And I am really happy to see these two heavyweights competing again. In the past couple of years, iPhones have almost uh, been close to a monopoly and that is never good for the consumer. However, with the S23 Ultra, Samsung has made an excellent comeback. So everyone, that was my full review of the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. I will be coming up with a lot of comparisons with the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Galaxy S23 Plus as well. So watch out for that. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you so much for watching.